Before we learn how we can edit a user in the database from our React application, let's first do the initial setup which we need to edit a user. So basically what I want is, when we click on any of these edit buttons, we want to display this form which we are displaying for adding the user. But this form should be populated with that particular user details. And here, instead of displaying create user, we want to display update user. And when the form is populated with that particular user, that form should also be editable. So the user can go ahead and edit the details. And when he clicks on the update user button, it should update that details in the database server. Let's see how we can do that. Let's go to VS Code. Here, I'm in the app component. So the first thing which I'm going to do is, I'm going to create a new state. I will call it edit mode. And initially, let's set this edit mode to false. Now in the web page, when the user clicks on this edit button, we have this edit button in this user details component. So here we have this edit button. On this edit button, let's go ahead and let's listen to click event. And when this click event happens, we want to call a function. And to that function, we want to pass this user object. So here inside this function, let me go ahead and create a new function. Let's call this function on edit user clicked. And to this function, we want to receive the user object, that particular user object. And here inside these curly braces, let's use an arrow function. And here from within this function, let's call this edit user clicked function. And to this function, we want to pass the event object. So we are going to receive this event object in this callback function. And then we also want to pass the user object, this user object. Now, when this function is clicked, in the app component, we want to have a function. Let's call this function maybe on edit user. So use this function keyword before this function name. And this function is going to receive the user object. For now, let's simply go ahead and let's log a message in the console on edit user called. Okay, now let's pass this on edit user as a props to this user details component. So here we have this user details component. On this component, let's create a props. Let's call this on edit user. And to that, let's assign this on edit user function. Now in the user detail component, inside this function, let's access that on edit user and let's call it. And let's also pass this user object to this on edit user. Now this function is also going to receive the event object. So let's also specify that parameter. So the first parameter which it is going to receive is the event object. And the second parameter it is going to receive the user object. Okay. All right. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let's open developer console. Let's clear everything and let's click on this edit button. And here you will see on edit user called. Now instead of logging this on edit user message, let's go ahead and let's log this user object. So here, let me clear this message. And instead of that, let's use this user object. Let's save the changes now. Let's go to the web page. Let me clear the console. And when I click on this edit button, you will see that that particular user object has been logged here. Okay, in the same way, if I click on this edit button, in that case, that particular user object has been logged here. So here you can see name is Steve. First name is Steve and last name is Jordan. And here also, first name is Steve, last name is Jordan. If I click on this edit button, here first name is Sarah, last name is King. So here you can see, first name is Sarah, last name is King. So in this way, Whichever edit button we are clicking here, that particular user object we are getting in our app component. Now we want to store this user object in a state. For that, let's go ahead and let's create a new state. Let's call it user and let's call the state updating function as set user. And to that, let's assign use state. And initially, let's set this user state to null. And here it should be let. Now inside this function, this on edit user function let's go ahead and let's set the edit mode to true and let's also set the user object to this user object which we are receiving inside this function and also when the edit button is clicked we also want to show the form for that we have another state called show form 
So let's also set that show form to true. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let me close this developer tool. Let's refresh the page. So when I click on this edit button, this form is also opening. Okay. Now, when I click on this edit button, this form is opening. But here, this button says create user. So here, instead of create user, I want to show update user. For that, let's go back to VS Code. And to this user form component, let's pass our state, our edit mode state. So on this user form, I'm going to create a new props. I will call it edit mode. And to this, I'm going to assign the edit mode state. Then in the user form, on this props object, we are going to have a property called edit mode. So here, we are displaying this create user. Instead of displaying create user, I'm going to use a set of curly braces. And here I will check if props.edit mode. If it is true, I want to display this string update user. Otherwise, if it is false, in that case, I want to display the string create user. Let's save the changes. Let's go back to the web page. So you can see now it is showing update user. But here we have a bug. So if I go ahead and click on this add user button now, here also we are seeing update user. That's because the edit mode state is still true. Okay, it is not false. So that's why we are still seeing this update user. Now what I want is when we click on this add user button, before doing anything, I want to set the edit mode to false. So let me go back to VS Code and let's go to this app component. So on this add user button, when we are clicking on this add user button, we have this event handler function, add user handler. So when we click on this add user button, before doing anything, what I want is I want to set the edit mode to false. So here let's say set edit mode to false. Now let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let me refresh the page. So when I click on this edit button, edit mode will be true. So that's why we see this update user. But now when I click on this add user button, the edit mode will be set to false. And in that case, we are seeing this create user text here. All right. Now we also want to populate this form with the details of that particular user. For that, from this app component, we need to pass this user state to this user form component. So here on this user form component, so here we have this user form component. I'm going to create a new props. I'll call it user. And to that, I will assign this user state. Okay. So in the user form now, on this props object, we will have a user. So what I'm going to do is on each of these input elements, I'm going to add a new attribute called default value. And this I will assign it with props dot user dot first name. Now I only want to populate this input field with props dot user dot first name if the edit mode is true. So here let's say if props dot edit mode if it is true, in that case we want to populate this field with the value of this first name property. Otherwise, we want to populate it with empty string. So if I save the changes, if I go to the web page. Let's refresh the page once. When I click on this edit button, you will see that the first name field is populated with the first name value. In the same way, if I click on this edit button, the first name field is populated with first name value. But if I click on this add user button, this first name is empty. Let's do the same thing for other fields. So I will copy this line of code. Let's add it on last name. And here we want to populate it with last name property of that user object. In the same way, here we want to populate this email field with the email value of that particular object. We want to populate this password field with the password property of that particular user object. Let's also populate this confirm password field with the password of the user. Then here we have this drop down list. So we want this drop down list to automatically select the country of that user. For that, again, we can use the default value property here, the default value attribute. And here we want to set this drop down with the country value of that user. In the same way, we want to set this city drop down with the city value of that user. Then we also have this date of birth. So we want to set this date of birth field with the date of birth of that user. So for that, we have this property DOB. 
then we also have this gender field and we want to set this gender radio button with the gender value of that user. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And if I click on this edit button, you will see that these fields are pre-populated with that particular user's detail. And if I click on this add user button, in that case, these fields should be empty. Okay, and it should display create user. But in case of edit, it should be pre-populated with that user details and it should show update user. Now, when I edit these fields, so let's say I add some new values here. Okay, and when I click on this update user button, these details should be updated for that particular user in the database server. Let's see how we can do that in our next lecture.